All right, everybody, welcome back to my channel. Um, yeah, so you're probably saying, what's Ollie doing with the Dwarf 2 smart telescope up on his screen? Look, I've seen a bunch of Astro. I feel like this particular product has just been a bit saturated online. And whenever I see something pushed as much as this and almost over reviewed as much as this, I get a bit suspicious about like, you know, why is it being pushed so much? You know, what's the deal here with this telescope? Um, yeah, it just piqued my interest because I kind of, I feel like it's been sort of um, oversold a little bit, like especially from some Astro channels that I've seen. And, um, you know, I'm... I did actually, this is the second time I'm going to record this video because the first time I was a bit over critical, if I'm being honest. So I'm going to try and, I'm going to try and temper myself with the second one. So look, the purpose of me doing this video is just to have a quick look at the product as an astrophotographer. So my background is I've been doing astrophotography for three years. Um, personally, I look at this and I say to myself, you know, it's definitely not for me as an astrophotographer. It's definitely not for me. Um, that's as somebody who's interested in taking um, high quality astro images of the night sky, like deep, deep sky objects, as we call them. So things like the Orion Nebula, the Carina Nebula, all those kind of classics that we know about. Um, so I guess I'm having a look at this saying, well, who is it for then? You know, it's it's sort of um, introducing the Dwarf 2. Let's read a little bit of it. Um, the most the world's most portable smart telescope controlled by the mobile app Dwarf Lab. Are you an amateur astronomer, bird watcher? Well, the Dwarf 2 is exactly what you need. Well, no, it's not. It, this is definitely not what I need as a um, an astronomer or an astrophotographer. Um, so I'm just I'm just going to have a look at this and see how it's sort of sold, how it's pitched, if it sort of passes the smell test here, and you know what's happening with this thing because I see a lot of channels sort of covering it, and I'm just like mm, something doesn't quite seem right here. All right, so let's have a quick look. So the Dwarf Lab, obviously, it's got you know four and a half stars, 212 reviews. I've got it in Australian dollars here, so 879 for the deluxe version, 679 um, for the classic, or I guess the basic version. It looks like you just get some extra filters, which makes sense. Um, um, 30 day money back guarantee, a one year warranty, lifetime customer support and fast shipping. Dimensions is it's a, it's about a kilogram, so pretty small, pretty compact. Um, features versatile, so you can use it during the day as well. Dwarf Two is a digital smart telescope with dual cameras and AI power, artificial intelligence power. You can take shots of deep sky objects, galaxy, and nebula. Watch and record videos of birds and animals, it works in both daytime and nighttime. Look, I'm going to try and not be too cynical here, but <laughs> like I can see a picture of a tiger here. I mean, it doesn't necessarily look like the kind of thing that I'd be using for wildlife photography, if I'm being honest. Um, I know it's, a, I guess it's got AI so it can track the animal for you, but you know, as somebody who takes pictures of birds with like high magnification lenses and things um you know i'd want to be sort of controlling that myself and i'm i'd be interested to know exactly what the optics are like in this close up like you know how how sharp those images come out um connect your tablet you know i, I guess that's the whole thing it's all been this is all being pushed around convenience and effortless you know, it's it's very um, low on effort, um, so it's easy. It's it's portable. You just set it up. But to me, that immediately says, if it's going to be that easy, it's going to be that cheap and that easy for an astro setup. Then the quality is not the quality of the images 
is going to be not the kind of images that I'd be looking for. They're, what, they're not going to be particularly good images. If you showed them to an astrophotographer, they're not going to be saying, oh yeah, I'm going to print that out for my wall. Um, now I can see there is one, I have heard people in the commentary say that they can see a use for this for things like schools and outreach groups and that kind of thing, where you literally just want to say to a group of people, hey, look, you know, look what's in the night sky. Maybe you take a quick image of like, um, you know, the Carina Nebula or, or um, Orion or something like that. So I, I get it from that point of view. I get that there's a there's a possibly a reason for it there. But if you're wanting to get into astrophotography and you've seen really good images out there, I very much doubt this would be what you would be looking at. Um, now, I appreciate there's not going to be a learning curve with this. Astrophotography does have a fairly steep learning curve. I admit that. And you have to buy the camera. You've got to buy the mount. You've got to buy the telescope. You know, it can be expensive to get started on. And um, there's no doubt about that. You know, a, a modest astrophotography system, even if you bought a small mount and you use your own DSLR um, and lenses, um, it's not going to be particularly cheap. Although I would also say, again, if you're a person out there that's already got a DSLR and a camera lens, then what I would be looking at is a small equatorial uh, mount for astrophotography, something like a Skywatcher AZ GTI, which run at around, you know, between sort of six hundred and a thousand dollars, depending on you know which version you get and stuff. So it's got a dual camera system. Yeah, we know that. I think I th I think I saw somewhere it's six hundred and fifty millimeter on its telephoto lens, and it's wide angle lens I'm not exactly sure what the focal length on that was I'm not sure where it's actually showing you the detailed where's the detailed specs on this then hassle-free setup yeah I get that you can take a picture look of a, a far off temple if you want to do that tracking birds okay lens parameters here we go 24 millimeter lens Um, the focal length of the telephoto 100 millimeter equivalent focal length is 675 millimeter telephoto 48 millimeter wide okay 8 megapixel telephoto 4 megapixel wide and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth you get a 64 gigabyte card you can export to JPEG or TIFF um, and then that's just got a bit about the yeah you know the little tripod and the battery and everything like that what's in the classic box what's in the deluxe edition album by dwarf okay so you've got some images here that's the lagoon nebula that's the veil nebula you see I get again I get maybe showing these as a an outreach group or something but as somebody who takes astro photos, these are not photos that I would be happy with. These these look pretty terrible, if I'm being honest. Or like the Lagoon one, at least they've got some colour in that, so I get that one. This one just looks a blurred sort of, and the Carina Nebula looks terrible as well. So look, I get it. I know a lot of people are going to be out there going... Oh, that's not what it's for, you know. It's 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 not it's not sort of um, it's not sort of pitched that way. It's not the um, it's not the target audience. But I think a lot of people might buy this thinking that um, I don't know, maybe that these are good astro photos, or that they can get good astro photos out of it. Um, so I just want to be clear that that's not the target audience. I do think the target audience is probably like in a school or in a group, just have one of these, you know, to have around, pull it out, you know, have a bit of fun with it and put it away. Because I think if you were to buy this as an individual, I think you might use it a handful of times and then I think it's gonna go in a cupboard or in a box. And then they've got, so they have a, an affiliate program. Let's see what you actually get as an affiliate. Because I'm kind of wondering why so many people are pushing this. 
6% commissions from qualifying orders. Our brand name and product quality helps maximize earnings. Why becoming a, an affiliate? 30 plus countries and regions are covered. Average customer sale is $500 and the commission is 6% on that. Okay. Well, I'll let you sort of draw any conclusions about that you want to. Um, yeah. And obviously it's gonna have reviews by its own, you know, by people who've given positive reviews. Um, join us to explore the cosmos. So, you know, I kinda, for me personally, if I was recommending somebody getting into astrophotography, um, if a, if a, somebody like, if somebody like maybe a, a school approached me or somebody in a group and they said, can you recommend anything that we can use really quickly, really easily to take some photos just to demonstrate the night sky, blah, blah, blah. I might say this is worth looking at, but for everybody else, for like individuals coming to me, I would say, um, get yourself a secondhand DSLR camera, something like a Canon 6D um, or whatever, you know, it doesn't have to be Canon 6D, Canon 5D. Spend maybe about four or five hundred dollars on a secondhand quality DSLR camera. Then look to get something like, look to get something like this, which is a, this particular lens is a Samyang 2.8. These, again, secondhand, you can get them for about 400 bucks or something like that. And start off by going out to a dark sky and taking some nice pictures of the Milky Way. You know, you don't need a tracking tripod or anything. You don't need an equatorial mount. Just your camera on a tripod with a wide angle lens and you can get some really good pictures of the Milky Way. Because I think if I recommended this to somebody, they'd be coming back to me pretty quick saying, well, you know, they're okay, but, you know, they're not great. Like the images, like, where do I go from here? And I just think that, like, I just think that you'd be upgrading from this in next to no time if you were an individual. Um, that's just my personal opinion, of course, and I know a lot of people, there you know, might be some people who have, um, who think this is, I don't know, useful for an individual to have. I guess there's, there's always a circumstance, hey, where it's gonna be suitable for somebody. But if you're, if you're serious about getting good quality astro images, then this would not be, this would not be the um, the telescope for you. I would go through the long, slow, <laughs> drawn out um, journey, um, and I know there's a cost. There is a cost um, associated to that. So that's why, personally, I would say if you only have this kind of money to spend and you don't want to spend a lot of money, I personally think the better option is get a DSLR and a lens but go out and take some really fantastic shots of the Milky Way. Um, because the step up to this, to me, is just taking really average shots of deep sky objects. Um, which, you know, I don't think, you know, for me, I wouldn't really like, it's just not something that sort of, um, I don't wanna take average photos of um, the night sky. Like it's a bit, it's not very um, inspiring, is it? So, you know that would be my advice to somebody getting into astrophotography and then if you're if you're finding you're really enjoying those uh, those images of the milky way and you want to take the next step you've got your dslr you've got a lens maybe now you buy yourself um a lens that's got more of a focal length to it maybe something like a 200 millimeter lens or a one 150 lens maybe you've already got those sort of focal length lenses what you can do then is you can buy something like a tracking mount. So, you know, if we just look up really quickly, like um, Skywatcher, um, AZ GTI, um, you know, there's, there's a few variations on this, but um, they're, around, they're around the $1,000 mark, basically. Um, there's this version here which is the latest one, which go for about, yeah, $1,000. There's also Skywatcher, AZ GTR, let's have a look. There are also these ones here, which I'll just show you, which you can get for 
I mean, this one shows it as $849. You can pick these up, and I've sold one of these myself. You can pick these up secondhand for like $500 in Australia. So if you've already got a DSLR and a camera lens, stick it on one of these um, and get some free software on your computer and start learning how to use that software, how to connect your laptop to this mount it will go to the object in the sky, but then you can take really long, nice long exposure to these objects and you can get some really nice quality images. And you know, sure, there is a learning curve and it's gonna take you, it's probably gonna take you a few months to really get your head around it. There's things like polar alignment, there's tracking, there's uh, knowing how to use the software, there's setting up imaging plans, you know, there's all of these things that you have to learn but there's so many good YouTube videos out there now which will show you how to do all this that for me, that's a far better option as an individual than going for one of these kind of smart telescopes, um, which I think are, like I said, I think they do have a use, but I think they're also a little bit gimmicky. And um, I just don't see, I don't see these um, holding a person's interest for very long and then soon getting retired to something that just sort of lives in a box. So um, look, I know that my opinion there might not be um, on the same page as everybody else's, but it's still worth putting an opinion out there if I don't agree with the, if I don't agree with some of the opinions that I've seen out there, which I think, personally, I think they oversell this. Um, so look, there's my two cents. You make your own decisions, you do your own research, and you make your own choices. And um, that's all I've got. So cheers guys and I will see you next time.